Good evening, everyone. I think uh, it was good that uh, when I was introduced, um, it was mentioned that it's been a very long day, so I'll try and make sure I don't stay in front of you for very long uh, to allow most of you to, to wind down with your day. But I wanted to start off by thanking the Global uh, Blockchain Business Council for inviting me to be here with you this evening, but also to listen in on some of the expert conversations on how the fourth industrial revolution will impact key global sectors, healthcare, education, agriculture, financial services, to mention but a few. But as we wind our day today, just wanted to share very briefly what Rwanda's journey has been and what we're doing to really uh, embark on this digital transformation uh, journey. And I do hope uh, for those of you that have spent your time here today sharing some of the work that you're doing, that you may find it attractive to come and do business in Rwanda at the end of my remarks. More than 20 years ago, we decided as a country to really leverage digital technologies and put them at the center of what our social economic development journey was going to look like. It was a very strategic and intentional or deliberate uh, decision to do so because we're a landlocked country um, and we really figured with the limited natural resources that we have, we really needed to bet big on uh, digital technologies. And our journey started in the late uh, 90s, early 2000. And we've come far, uh, but we've also embarked on how we can leverage these emerging uh, technologies where service convenience, security by design and sophistication is something that our people continue to demand. To enable top-notch technologies to prevail in our ecosystem, we've also adopted a multifaceted um, approach, enabling pillars such as capacity building, um, the investments in infrastructure, coupled with strong data strategies, appropriate legal uh, frameworks or business environment, have been the stepping stones for what it takes to see adoption of these emerging technologies, both in the public sector and the private sector. Use cases are constantly developed um, within our ecosystem, and I'll be sharing a few, with, uh, a few of them with you shortly. And even as I listen in on the very last two panels, a lot of these things that were said and shared today, this evening, resonate with what is really happening, not just in Rwanda, but on the African continent. Technology, when properly managed, will lead to inclusive development, but also can be excruciatingly exclusive and cause divides that we don't all desire. Imran on the previous panel talked about the need to have digital technologies that empower people with disabilities, children, the marginalized communities. And that's why uh, it, it's always going to be a constant pursuit, not just for our government, but even for some of you that are in the private sector to make sure that no one is being left behind. I would like to share a few use cases uh, that will highlight how, as a country, we continue to leverage uh, digital technologies in response to addressing some of the social economic development challenges that we continue to grapple with as a country. Starting with healthcare, we've been able to use drones to deliver medical products, starting with life-saving blood. And we know that most Rwandans, especially in the rural parts of the country, are able to uh, uh, you know, uh, get this life-saving blood that is delivered using drones. And this has saved blood wasted by 67%. Drones um, continue to be used to research on how we can reduce on malaria um, by spraying in areas that have the high likelihood to generate contamination or to spread um, the, the mosquito breeding uh, insects. And so clear uh, results of using these, uh, the drone technologies in our health sector continue to scale because of the impact we continue to see across the board. We also, uh, staying with the, with the health sector, we've been able to use AI triage tool uh, to deliver a digital fast healthcare approach for our citizens. We're a country that started with ensuring that at least every citizen has the minimum uh, basic healthcare insurance in place, but that wasn't enough to just have healthcare insurance. It's also figuring out how we lower the cost of healthcare, how we ensure the quality of healthcare is delivered to our people and, and what the role of technology is to deliver that. And that's why a digital fast healthcare approach is one that we continue uh, to push for as a country to ensure that we deliver on a cost-effective but also quality healthcare services for our citizens. 
The other sector where we continue to see growth and, and, and impact of what uh, the fourth industrial revolution or the emerging technologies are contributing is within the financial sector. And our goal is to make sure that at least uh, uh, all Rwandans are financially included in the next two years, by 2024. Uh, we've embarked on a data-driven evidence-based um, uh, approach on how we can deliver on a cashless economy. And, and we did hear about the, uh, the central bank uh, currency uh, that, that is really, you know, a few countries are already embarking on uh, as we think about cryptocurrencies and all, and we are a country that is also um, uh, looking at that as well. Specific to blockchain, which has really been a big part of the conversations, at least for the two sessions that I sat in um, as we looked at it, we've been able to leverage uh, blockchain technology to develop a paperless land management system. And this has minimized the amount of fraud that could possibly happen during uh, land transfers or sell, um, but also improving the authenticity and verification of land ownership, which um, has significantly really reduced the malpractices that could happen with land, which in many parts um, of, of, our, of our country is a big asset for many of the households. As we, in education, that's also another sector that hasn't been left behind. We've piloted a program with the UNICEF and ITU, which is called Giga School Connectivity. Some of you may be already familiar with it. And this is really a program that is designed to deliver school connectivity and starts with mapping of schools in each country and then figuring out the financing that is required for these schools. Um, but at the same time, also looking at what are some of the other levers that will empower uh, you know, the students and teachers uh, to benefit from this digital infrastructure that is being rolled out in these schools. But what is interesting about this program is also the need to figure out innovative financing models that can deliver the scale and impact of school connectivity, because the sheer value, the sheer amount that is required um, to deliver, uh, to close on the gap of school connectivity is huge. And so in trying to figure out what could be those innovative financing models, we worked with Giga and ITU, and we were able to use Ethereum to fund uh, school connectivity. And this really looks at how we stack Ethereum to fund school connectivity uh, from the interest that has been earned. So on top of this, Rwanda is enabling a thriving FinTech ecosystem, uh, whether it's through the policies that we put in place, but also uh, really thinking through how we establish Rwanda as a hub that attracts global and regional uh, FinTech innovations. And, and all of these efforts have been complemented with different institutional arrangements, whether it's the data office that really looks at data protection and privacy, which is, uh, is a critical aspect as you think about the digital economy, or whether it's the Center for Fourth Industrial Revolution that we've put in place with the World Economic uh, Forum. And so these institutions are supported by a growing number of the startup industry, of the private sector, large companies, who have the intent to use emerging technologies to change uh, the lives of Rwandans. Rwanda brands itself as a proof of concept nation, where we continue to challenge ourselves to figure out what kind of enabling environment do we need to have in place. And when we talk about enabling, the regulatory certainty is key, the regulatory environment is key. Obviously, as we think about emerging technologies, the need, especially like blockchain, as we're discussing here, the need to have regulatory sandboxes where we can test and try uh, some of these innovations. And once the benefit is proven, the risks are understood um, and, and there are ways to mitigate these risks, then we can start to scale um, going forward. And so all of this to show what has already been happening over the last um, 22 years for us as a country, but the journey remains long. The journey remains long in terms of there's still potential for more uh, to be done. And I wanted to close off uh, my remarks uh, this evening uh, by sharing what I think is critical even as we go forward. Partnerships are key. Government alone cannot deliver on the ambition of, of a digital economy. Neither can the private sector do that. And so that collective effort that we require to have in place where each one plays their role, where government thinks about um, you know, our role to provide an enabling environment, but also the private sector making the necessary uh, investments uh, that, are, that are required to really uh, provide impact, but also impact at scale. 
The second thing is around harmonizing regulations. And if, if, if you've heard me speak before, you'll know that this is something that is very, um, that I'm very passionate about because Rwanda positions itself as a proof of concept hub. It, it means we're setting up ourselves to be a, a place where you can test and try these innovations. But it's important that scale is thought about. And for scale to happen, it means that regulations must be harmonized across the board. Uh, for some of you in the private sector, you will agree with me that it doesn't help if you have to deal with tens of, of different regulatory requirements and environments, especially when you're a startup and you take a lot of time trying to figure out what regulatory requirements do I need to fulfill for every market that I have to get in. And so not just for Africa, but I think there has to be uh, a concerted effort to sort of figure out how do we harmonize these regulations, which are so important to provide at uh, the scale that our startups need, but also uh, to quicken the impact that we can all get. And so that, that's very critical. And I hope that as we go away from here, um, th this is something that we can collectively, and we always welcome input and feedback from the private sector um, to tell us what does it take for us to do to have that harmonization because primarily it's a role that governments have to play uh, obviously with the input of, of the private sector. So as I close, uh, I just wanted to urge everyone and also to thank you for your time and being here, um, I know at the, towards the end of the day, but also um, just to say that our collective responsibility is to build partnerships that scale and that will leave no one behind. And if you do want to find a place to do business in Africa, Rwanda is open for you to come and do business. Thank you very much. <laughs>